Hi, this is the EAC meeting for July 16th. Um, we're going to call the meeting to order. Yes, first thing on the agenda is the approval of the June 1st meeting minutes. Did everybody get a chance to look at it? Any comments, revisions that I need to make before I can send um, them off? Yeah, I, I have one or two minor ones that I'd like to add and it deals with the land use plans. Just to make it clear that on the second page, the M&M storage, that was presented to the Board of Supervisors at their April 15th meeting and zoning's not looking at it. Um, the initial input on the sketch plan was negative and I don't think it's done anything since that. Oh, okay. You want me to rewrite it and send it to you? Sure. Just that, yeah, that one sentence. Okay. And then it, instead of calling it Wegmans, it might be better if we call it the mixed use overlay district ordinance, okay. because it's not really for the Wegmans project yet. It's for the change in the ordinance. So that might be a little more accurate. I can do that too. I can just change those two things and then send the whole thing to you and I'll send it to Eugene too. Okay, good. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. Changes? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I, I don't have uh, any changes. Actually, when, uh, you know, Gene uh, writes these up, uh, I offer my input at that time. I read them. And uh, so there's revisions made before. Uh, well, it, well, well, it's actually still in a draft form, but, you know, it's fine with me. All right, Junior, Kevin, no changes then? No, no comments. All right, then once I get um, Alan's changes, uh, I will send it off to Barbara at the township. Um, and I'll copy all you guys so you can have the final right. version. Okay. okay, great. Sounds good. Okay. All right, agenda two, tree planting. So I sent an email earlier this week to Kurt and Jim Majewski to find out if it was possible. If we could plant this fall, I haven't heard back from them. Uh, Monica and I were talking a little bit before the meeting started. One of the big issues, I guess, that we may have to keep in our minds is that we have to keep everybody socially distanced. So this might be a project that we may have to actually do as a two day or multiple day project. Um, once I hear back from Kurt and Jim, I guess we'll, we'll get all the details. Hopefully it's something we can do for this year, but at this point it's just gonna be one of these, hopefully tree planting for 2020, possible tree planting for 2021. We're not quite sure yet with everything that's going on. But, so, you know, ex outside tree planting projects, uh, it's a lot easier to main so maintain social distance than it is in... in not it. Yeah, but Patterson's linear. These these trees are going to be, ne they're going to be pretty close to each other. This isn't like the ball field. The ball field, we could have spread people out a little bit more. Right. This, I mean, we can still spread so, people out different portions of the creek, but they're still going to be, the trees are going to be pretty close to each other. And tell I them we can wear masks, if that helps. Yeah. Well, masks, but you could also, you know, we plant every other every other tree. And every other tree, you're right. Or we start, people, we start people on two different, like one, if, if people are on two different sides of the creek, it's still socially distant. And then maybe right. in the beginning, so I put people in the beginning, people in the middle, and people towards the end and work it that way. Um, I guess we're going to have to see what the, what the, the Board of Supervisors says, what what types of volunteers we get that the more we get people that are either related or know each other really well, we can clump them together. But at this point, I don't know what's going to happen, but. Right. Is it possible to split it into two parts, one in fall and one in spring? Oh yeah. So, I mean, Patterson get, can't split anyway. That's yeah. possible. So then we um, have a smaller number of people. Uh, so, and they can, they can be split over two days so that we can ensure uh, social distancing. Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. It's just, it's going to depend on what, what everybody's, what the board is, com what, you know, the board and Kurt are comfortable with. Linda, can I step in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you may or may not know, I've been dealing with a lot of COVID planning <laughs> over um, the last few months. And if you can come up with a solid plan for how you're going to social distance, I would recommend that the AIC come up with a written plan as um, we can, as a township, bring the plan to the Department of Health for review so they can vet out 
the plan of action of how you plan to do things and then possibly get into this project. I think that would probably be your best bet is just to do a written plan first, start thinking it out, and then we can move from there with the planting. Um, okay. So but, when you're when you're saying a written plan, you mean guidelines for um, um, how far apart people will be and things like that, and how you're going to manage it, what you're going to do with restrooms. Will people will you supply hand sanitizer? Will they have to supply their own hand sanitizer? Will people be able to wash their hands? Um, will you be providing water? <laughs> will they will they have to bring water? Um, if you go on our COVID link on the website, I posted all the league plans. I also have a number of the other plans that we have had approved by the Department of Health. And um, it, looking at those it will help you come up with that. We have a plan for summer camp um, by, by using those that will probably help you kind of come up with a good protocol by which you end up planning. Okay, sounds good. Good idea. Yep. Okay, so um, I'll I'll start on that at least because it's easier for me to do it since I have the the actual plan to work with the the planting plan, um, and then I'll send it to everybody for review before we. I guess it's probably I'll send it to everybody in the EAC for review first, and then once we agree, we can send it to Monica to take a look at just to make sure we're kind of in the right area, and then submit at that point. Okay. We're not going to worry right. about. Today. Sounds good dates at this point, leave that open for now? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll coordinate with the nursery to make sure that the plants are still in stock. Um, and we can, yeah, we can go from there and see what needs to be done. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to point number three, which is the Arboretum and Memorial Park. And that is actually why Monica and Ellen Saracini are uh, with us today to talk a little bit about that. Jim and I had met out at the site uh, a few weeks ago. There's some trees that need to be replaced and some maintenance that needs to be done um, in that one area that was planted. And then Monica had actually gotten in touch with me on a completely different topic, which is what she's going to bring up, which actually is going to connect with that maintenance that we want to do. So Monica, I'm going to put this out to you now. You're on mute. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there I am. Um, so I just wanted to tell you last year, um, Ellen and I started working together a lot um, with regards to the Garden of Reflection. And um, we were primarily focused on getting the berms done at the garden. I don't know if you noticed how bad, what the condition is of the berms at the garden, but they're, you know, dying, um, quite frankly. So we put some money aside in the Lou fund last year for that. And then when we started talking about it, we identified a number of other things. There's the red tip of paths out there that needed um, to be fixed. The garden beds are in horrible shape. There's a number of trees that were dying, had dead branches. So, um, we kind of we kind of put our brains together and Ellen came up with some real creative ways um, to bring the tech school um, in through slip grants so the students can get on the spot um, training. Um, the tech school is in there now clearing out trees and debris and um, she also was able to secure a grant that she can tell you about um, at, with regard to the tipple path. Um, the reason that we're coming really to the EAC today the, the um, Board of Supervisors did approve um, the project as a whole. Um, we just uh, really would like the EAC, if we could have you involved even throughout the rest of the park too, with volunteer projects as far as the cleanup and, um, you know, just even with this project as we move along, probably more in August. So um, I, I'll let Ellen talk a little bit more about some of the grants today that she was able to secure and you know, some of the projects. Right, yes. Uh, well, like Monica said, we started working with the, the tech school. We felt this was a really great opportunity that uh, we could um, have them do their summer project, which is an eight week long project time. Um, and the, the SLIP grant allows uh, for the students to be paid. 
the we got an Ivan's Outreach Center house, which working with their 21st century grant, that was able to pay supervisors and teachers, and and then other things. Um, you know, like they the Ivan's house even brings uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and watermelon or fruit. You know, for the kids every day for lunchtime. Um, but they they can supply different things that are needed along the way. Uh, we also got a foundation community partners grant. And so with the coordination of all of that, the the uh, students and the teachers and supervisors are all paid for this summer work. And then what was very exciting was that and what the school really liked too. Uh, the walkways are really in bad condition all the way around. Now we're talking about the walkway that goes not the cement the concrete walkway that's in where the fountains are, but around the back where that red tipple was in the, in the garden reflection. And then all along through the whole, all the pathways through the Oak garden. Um, a lot of it is non-existent. The red tipple has just, it's been a long time and it, it the, um, the topography of it takes it on a sloping down so that when the rains are around and whatever, all the red tipple just has gone away and, and uh, the grass has also grown over. So in some spots, you can't even see the walkway In other spots, it's, you know, like this wide and some of it is, is, um, it's very uneven and un could be hazardous. I mean, I mean, we, we were there and, uh, some parents were there with their children and they said, be careful walking. This is a rocky roadway. And I went, oh my gosh, well, not for long. Anyway, um, I approached a company called Porous Pave. It's a permeable surface um, that is made with tires. So um, they, you know, they are getting the tires out of the landfills um, and they are putting um, um, this down as walkways. Now, um, they have done a lot of installations around the area, the Phillies, um, Temple, uh, UPenn, uh, Princeton, um, the uh, um, Eagles Stadium, just to mention a few that are around here. They all have this same porous pave, um, pavement, permeable surface. So um, I talked to them and I told them what the project was about. And the whole reason why we started was because I can't even believe I'm saying this, but the 20th anniversary of the attacks is coming in like 14 months from now. So um, we had to start right now in this garden restoration and they loved the project, loved the Garden of Reflection, and said, we want to make a donation. They are now donating all of the material, which comes to about 9,500 uh, square feet of surface, and it's about a $100,000 donation. Um, so they're donating the material to us, but they are also going to be here, and now they are going to teach the students a life skill. They're going to teach them how to lay this porous surface um, and the school was very excited about that. Um, so the students are going to, we're going to start work um, re redefining the walkways, making them uh, into the same width that they were before. And then they will put down four inches of some stone, a uh, base stone layer. And then the company will come out after that and teach them how to do the surface. So we're really excited. It also now is going to make it that all of these areas um, throughout the back of the garden, which connects to the other township walkway and all through the Oak Garden is now going to be handicapped accessible. So we're really happy about that because if you, you can go now, boy, the kids have been working a lot and this weather has been atrocious for them, really. Never a complaint. They're, they're really good kids. But uh, walk through the Oak Garden, you'll see the walkways before they're done. But it the, it is amazing the difference there already with um, taking out compromised trees, with weeding, with taking the branches off and elevating the branches that were low. But it's so much cooler sitting underneath there, walking underneath there, because now the honey locusts have totally grown over and it's a, a completely shaded area, but it's got benches along the walkway and it's really a very nice area now. So that's the project. We're very excited about it. And they'll be working for eight weeks during the summer. So they're going to work all um, up until school starts again or school doesn't start again, whatever it is going to be. But um, uh, we're excited to be partnering with everybody. Yeah, it sounds good. I have a question, Ellen. Uh, wasn't there a separate organization? I think you might even have been the head of it or set it up initially uh, to take care of uh, that whole section of the garden. Yes, so I did, um, I did establish a 501c3 
It's for an endowment for um, the perpetual care of the Garden of Reflection. Um, we are, uh, our goal because of township estimates on what it would cost to maintain, we went with the highest that they uh, came up with was $60,000 a year. We figured that with 3% on our money, we had a goal uh, set, we do have a goal set for $2 million. So um, we have been fundraising for that now. And we, um, well, this year changed a lot of things, that's for sure. We have a, a, a really nice brochure presentation and a folder that was all donated to, for us. Um, but we, our whole thing was going, that we're going out to big corporations, businesses, and private donations um, and asking them for donations. But we've all, we, we were at 1.226. Um, so we're over halfway there, which is great. Um, our fundraising efforts from now, this is not putting COVID in the mix, but uh, we're going to generate um, enough that we were going to be in need of about $600,000 and uh, we would be able to meet the $2 million goal. So now this year, like I said, has thrown a little bit into the mix. We probably need more like 700,000, but uh, we're, still, we're still on our way. We're gonna be heading out really strong uh, next year. I feel that a lot of donations uh, could come in because of the 20th anniversary coming up. Um, also, there's going to be, you know, our, our founding donor wall that's there. We're going to have endowment plaques. So anyone with a donation over $2,500 will be remembered forever at the Garden of Reflection as being um, a donor to the endowment to preserve the memorial in perpetuity. So we're well on our way. We're over halfway there and um, we still have a way to go. And hopefully next year is gonna um, bring us to a better place for fundraising. Um, but our goal, I would still love our goal to be that for the 20th anniversary, we can start um, the endowment uh, moving along that the, what it's going to be is, you know, you invest the 2 million, the money generated from that will be able to give us enough money to take care of the garden. And right now with those estimates, we're hoping that it takes care of the garden, but it can also take care of other areas inside Memorial Park. Um, because really we would need less than 2 million if we were only taking care of the garden. So because uh, these other areas that we have developed, the Oak Garden, the Flag Circle, the entrance way up in the front, um, it is the presentation to the memorial. So if all of those areas are well kept, uh, it really does benefit the, for us, the appearance of, you know, leading into the uh, memorial. So um, that's 60, thousand was a, a, a thought, a process, um, a pricing that was able to sustain all those areas. Um, and there'll be issues that come up in the garden. We might need to do, you know, put to, to put some more, keep some more money in specifically in the garden, but those years that we won't need that, we can put it into other areas of Memorial Park. Um, and, you know, things like this, if look at this project we're doing, there was $50,000 allotted to take care of the berms. We have totally removed that, that cost and have the students working on it. Um, so, you know, projects like this, and that's why it would be really great to start a committee um, for, you know, for continuing on where we had volunteers. We can have certain days, certain times of the year where volunteers go out. Um, because this this effort was coordinated with the school and its grants and whatever else. But I know there are a lot of people who want to do volunteer work that could, uh, you know, sign up and, and be on this to, to do projects. Um, we're, we're looking actually for a couple more students um, and or fathers if they wanted to do. When we start to do the stonework, uh, that's going to be some heavy duty work. Um, the students are not complaining about it and they'll be up for it, but we would like some more. And Porous Pave said they could handle um, six, seven or eight, at least six, but up to eight students, they said would be fine. And we feel the opportunity for them to learn how to lay a, perme a permeable surface would be really beneficial for them. So I think we'll look for a couple other people and uh, get that many to do the walkway. All right. So uh, then it's my understanding now and in the future, uh, Parks and Rec or uh, Lower Makefield Township Maintenance will not be maintaining that portion of the garden. Is that correct? 
once the good yes once the endowment is filled that is the goal that this money will then be able to support any of the maintenance that's needed there i, I okay. we feel we feel really good about what we've done we think that we're a model that every community should adopt uh, the fact that we wanted a memorial, uh, our whole community, obviously, with because of fundraising efforts that has been proven, our whole community wanted it. But we all wanted to have something. We built the Garden of Reflection. Um, it's a beautiful area, and it's used by a lot of people. It's amazing when you're there all day and you're working, how many people you see are actually there all the time. Um, but then what we have done is now continued the fundraising so that uh, we can have an endowment. And if more uh, programs like that were set up, it would mean that you'd have a great place to live. Like we know, Lower Makefield is a great place to live. Uh, but we also then have these areas that are able to be taken care of perpetually. And that is our goal. And uh, we, we feel very proud that uh, we're able to set this up. In, in hopefully in the near future. And the near future means um, I'm hoping for the 20th anniversary. All right, but uh, Linda initially talked about uh, what we call the Compass Arboretum, which is at the high point of the township, which is, you know, uh, further north, uh, where there's some trees that actually have to be replaced and some understory trees that, uh, you know, need some pruning and a little TLC. But you're not talking about taking care of that portion of the park, are you? Um, the the new plantings that were put in the new arboretum plantings on the side is that what you're talking well, about? Well, no, this is in the back. Uh, we call it the Compass Arboretum. There's 25. It's a grove of uh, 25 native uh, trees. Um, and uh, well, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's up at the uh, north end of the prop. They call it the high point because that where that grove is located is actually the highest elevation in the township. Uh, okay, right. But it's apart from the, uh, the, the what I call the classic memorial garden. It's to the northwest of the Garden of Reflection. Oh, James, I'm going to talk about this one. Um, Ellen is very specific to the Garden of Reflection. Um, we talked about now with the tech school being more involved in our partnership with the tech school that we can expand throughout all of Memorial Park, which is more of us as the park and rec or the EAC we can bring our volunteers and broaden the scope of the project overall and, and work on the rest of the Memorial Park, the areas that you're talking about. All right, but I, I assume though for now, uh, for now that's, I assume that's not gonna be uh, done. Uh, and we couldn't actually, you know, pay for uh, the trees that have to be replaced in the uh, compass garden and uh, then in the future, if uh, Ellen's group takes that over as well, you know, that's all well and good. But I think for right now, I think we have the means, I think we have the money uh, to, you know, do that. You're not talking a lot of money there. We're talking about, you know, two trees. Uh, I forget what the varieties they were. But the whole project planning and everything else is probably about $1,000 or so. Do you agree, Linda? I agree. Are you unmuted? Less than that. It's only two trees and some meat. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, our current cost is like three twenty-five a tree for replacement. So we're talking six or seven dollars, and there's plenty of money in the tree bank, you know, to take care of that at this time. So my feeling is that we should take care of that now, and then in the future, if Ellen's group wants to take over that and essentially the whole park, I mean, that would be wonderful. Well, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the technical school. So the technical school is separate, Ellen. They're helping Ellen right now. But the right. technical school wants to partner more in the park, and they could help with that in the long term. Right, maybe in the long term. But for now, uh, what uh, I think we would like to do is get these trees planted as soon as possible, probably in the fall. And, uh, you know, Ellen and her group wouldn't have to worry about that at all. I think this is something that, uh, <clears throat> you know, the EAC could, uh, you know, uh, take care of uh, once we get approval, you know, from the Board of Supervisors. And I believe they, they initially agreed to this, didn't they, Linda? The board? They haven't submitted this yet. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not hearing you. You haven't you submitted this yet. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, now I can hear oh, you. I'm sorry. Um, the letter we prepared only went internally to the EAC. We have to uh, we have to vote on it to submit it. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Uh, and I'm assuming that we're going to be doing that tonight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. After this. Yeah. After uh, after we go through this whole discussion. Right. Uh, do in order to talk, do we have to use that button or not? Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. So I guess you don't have to use that space key or whatever it is. Okay. Ellen, I agree that the stones on the paths were washing away all the time. Every time you had a big storm, you'd see them washed away. So it's great you're going to the pervious surface. Uh, the EAC is a big proponent of pervious surface. I'm not familiar with pervious surface made out of tires, but I assume it's similar to the other pervious surface. Yes, um, <clears throat> it's a superior pro product, which I'm really thrilled about. And their binder that this specific, like, specific company, Porous Pave, uses is one of the best in the industry. Um, their results are really good. And like I said, those places that I mentioned that we're using it, they, they use it all over. It's a company, a small company out of Michigan, um, but they have a lot of installations, well, north, south, you know, all over. But it's been used in the Northeast for over 10 years um, in all of these places. Well, I don't, I can't say all of 10 years for all of the places that I mentioned, but in the Northeast. So it, it weather doesn't have an issue with it. Um, the, the surface is very easily maintained, um, maybe a vacuuming once, once a year. Um, we don't have a lot of debris that lays around at the garden. There's a, always a prevailing wind. So, you know, there, we never go and rake. There's nothing ever to, to be there. So we don't anticipate that there's any, um, any buildup of anything, but it is going to be, I really feel that it will be a, a um, substance that is going to work with the land that is out there. We, we can't put the macadam, we can't put concrete out there. Uh, the stones we have, we know they wash away, but more important is what surface could we put there to have it where hand, it's now handicapped accessible. So we're really excited about this. I have information, Monica, you even have the information too. Uh, we can get you the information on it if you want to read about this porous pave um, material, but uh, we're, that's, that's what it is. It's, you know, it'll handle 5,800 gallons of water per hour per square foot. So, um, and some of the stuff that I'm reading about, it's, it's pretty, um, uh, it's pretty interesting, um, this product, uh, and all permeable surfaces, but this one seems to be uh, one that is a very high quality one. Right. And the company that's putting it in, they've done the engineering, they understand, you know, the slopes and all that, and know how to construct it. Is there we a met, yes. Effort? They've laid a lot of installations that are like this in, in park settings, walkways, in, in stadiums, in all different kinds of outdoor uh, areas. But we also had Jim Majewski out there and he knew from a long time ago from when the project first started with the garden, but we already talked with the tech school. We're gonna put some drainage in the back where, where it will go over the, it'll be under the walkway um, because the walkway is a real issue back there because the water does go down towards the, the wetlands back there. But uh, we'll put in some drainage there. We'll address that. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it is. I mean, you know, the, the whole setup from um, the, when, we, when it first was excavated, when the park first opened up, there were a lot of areas that weren't done, you know, so great. Um, so, but that's okay. You know, it's been a lot of years. We see where the issues are. We can put in a, a stone drainage area in those areas. And um, with the surface, you know, it's being that being that is bonded together and it's, and it will move as the, the ground moves. Um, we feel really strongly uh, that this is going to be a real durable product for us. And work in the, the water goes through it though. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. I had some uh, comments, similar comments to Ellen is that, uh, um, I'm getting, a, uh, I have some concerns regarding the pervious payment or in terms of its principle, I think it's a wonderful thing to use, but if you want to, uh, capture, uh, water in through the, um, the payment surface, the slopes around it have to go towards it. 
not away from it meaning in that sense the your paving should ideally be lower ground so i don't know whether that's being done um because paving is normally thought of as something above grade i mean you want to keep it out okay. of the thing so if it is above it is not actually going to serve the purpose of capturing uh, storm water and so that is a concern that i have as to i don't know how the design is going to be but i see misconceptions in such planning the other thing is um um uh, in terms of volunteers that you uh, talked about um uh, for some reason i've been getting emails from uh, people in the community asking for opportunities to help uh, and there were a couple of people a couple of months back who have to log in uh, x number of volunteer hours over the summer and i think i had forwarded uh, given them monica's um, email uh, as a general person to contact for volunteering i don't know whether they contacted uh, her but they wanted to do something similar clear up cleaning and helping of this kind so if if you are if you still need people i can see if they i can just get them in touch with you and you can see whether it works out great so right now um what we'll do is um i can get monica the information for um who we're working with at the Ivans Outreach Center and the through the Century 21 grant the reason why i say that is because um we especially for this project that's going to come up soon and then we're going to be working on it pretty quickly this walkway um and a lot of work has to be done if you can imagine you know there's a lot of of surface area um we are going to need some volunteers for that but being that the students from the school are on site the Ivans uh house will um vet anybody who is coming in because if we have an adult we don't want any adult that we don't know who they are if there's children working there so all we have to do is give the name to um Ali who works for um uh the Ivans house and doing who does the 21 for a uh, 21st century grant and she will vet them out she can so she can do all the arranging so Monica I'll give you her name and contact information and then i i just would rather since we're having the school involved right now i would rather make sure that we keep it the way it's going instead of having all volunteers just show up and and if we have adults um we can make sure that the adults uh, we know who the adults are so do you want me to uh, ask them to contact monica about this or you're happy as it yes is? you tell her to tell them to contact monica and then i will give monica um this the name for who she can just give them to because and monica uh, yeah monica so what do i say if you give me a one sentence description of what kind of volunteering work it would be what do i tell them I can part yes, so with you on that i just if you communicate with me i'll give you a blurb right okay. about what we're going to do but i would prefer the the it be organized so that we're coordinating all of our efforts um with yeah. this particular project and one Wait. another question i had on the paving uh, is the maintenance uh, how do you go, how are you proposing to maintain the pervious pavement because that's where um, uh, the catch in all the pervious stuff is i i will okay. Mm -hmm. our staff will maintain it as that we will for the other pervious project that we're going to do so okay. so you will take your vacuum truck there and do it yeah we'll take care of it yeah great sounds good mm -hmm. that's really all we have today we just wanted to make sure to um you know we're looking forward to a lot of volunteer hours in the august time frame so long as our covid situation is such that we can work that way <laughs> um right now we do have a small group of students working under covid restrictions um with masking and social distancing protocols in place and um and we would have to follow those same protocols for anything that we do and and i think whatever you come up with for the tree planting to um kind of it will will be a great way to um set in stone how, all these larger volunteer projects so i think that's fantastic that's great Uh, can I, uh, Linda with your permission since Monica is here and she might like to leave can I ask her uh, one of the questions which is supposed to be at the odds and ends oh sure uh, <laughs> so Monica I'm just taking advantage of the fact that you are here and uh, Jim is here Jim I'm just going to raise the question about the planting around the community uh, um uh, our community building 
Uh, so um, I'll, I'll say goodbye. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah. Nice talking to you. Yeah, great talking to you. You guys stay safe. Okay. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Uh, so Monica, there is a little bit of planting under the signboard at the community center. Mm -hmm. uh, small shrubs. Yeah. So some of them uh, are suspiciously. Um, I think I and Jim pronounce it differently. It's L I R I O P E, which is considered not non-native. I P. Okay. Oh, I, we have Jim Majewski review all the plantings that were going in there. The smaller shrubs. There may have been some non-native plants. The plants. Uh, the native. Uh, he said it did not violate anything uh, as far as the township ordinance goes. Um, okay, but uh, I mean, so uh, so the non-native ones were planted consciously. Uh, well, there were a couple uh, potential to replace another item that he couldn't get due to COVID nineteen um, that he said that he might get. Um, yeah, but we did review his plan before he went and um, planted. Okay, them. so we had a resident uh, again reach out uh, saying that this was a non-native and could we do something about it. So from I just said that we will look into it and uh, first verify whether it is indeed non-native. So Jim and me went and took a look. So I think it is the non-native species. Jim is not so sure. So according to you, Jim Majewski knows exactly what went in, right? Yes, yes. We, well, we, no, wait, maybe I can clarify everything. The issue is uh, with the plants under the sign. Is that correct, out front? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, assume, yeah, when I went there the first time to check out if it were Liriope or not, I didn't even notice that sign. I went to uh, the building itself and I checked the plants all around there. As far as I know, they're a native grass. I think they're a little blue stem, and that's what the plan called for. Uh, now, when I looked out front again under the sign, they are clearly a non-native, but my understanding is that this was a Boy Scout project. They put them in, and uh, I guess they didn't know about the native plant ordinance or what have you, so they have, uh, actually there's two grasses there, and I'm pretty sure both of them are uh, non-native, but it's my understanding when the bike path is going through, all that's going to be removed. So I think this problem is going to go away. Is this correct? Oh, this okay. is not correct. We They were planted just outside of the bike path. The Boy Scout had planned for the bike path to be put in. You mean the ones under the sign? Yes. Under the, uh, you know, a community center sign? Yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, they, when you look at the fine print, you are you know, allowed to use non-natives, but it's pretty strict uh, as to when you can and when you can't use non-natives. Uh, basically, they there has to be a compelling reason to put non-native plants in. And I'm not sure that that criteria were met uh, when these plants were put in. But you said Jim Majewski was aware of this when they were put in? Yes, Jim Majewski reviewed the entire plan and um, was aware of what plants were going in and he felt that that was okay. I'm not sure we agree with that, but uh, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll have to see as, a, uh, uh, as an organization what we want to do with that, if we want to take it further or not, Monica, by you know maybe informing other people or not, but that's something the EAC will decide. Yeah, are the grasses... Oh, just wanted to get an idea from Monica. So um, potentially we can contact Jim and um, uh, say that we noticed this. This was brought to our attention. Yeah. And, we'll be aware. Uh, and uh, given uh, uh, feasibility, if it is feasible to uh, source native grasses, can we get them replaced? Um, you, I, you know, I would have the discussion with Jim Majewski because I am not aware I like I don't know the ordinance the way that he would know the ordinance or you would know the ordinance so it's like um, uh, what Jim said they has they have to be compelling reasons why they were not obtainable yes I, I mean COVID-19 is was a huge barrier for this um boy scout uh, who was receiving a lot of his plants by donation and um I, I don't know exactly why it was not a violation of the ordinance but Jim Majewski did not feel as though 
it was a violation at that time when we met out there. Okay. Um, well, I guess we can address that, you know, with, uh, you know, yeah. with Jim Monica. So uh, you're off the hook as far as all that's concerned. <laughs> and also, just for your information, I think it is possible to get native plants uh, for changing these out uh, by donation as well. Looks I, like. If you do do that, I would appreciate if we could include the Boy Scout in the change. Include them. Include them, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a big project for them. It's it's their Eagle Scouts, how they earn their way through the Scouts. And and I think it'd be um, great if we can include him in anything that you, if you are recommending this, and this is something that we end, uh, you know, end up getting approved or whatever you want to talk about it. Um, I think including him would be the best way to go. Okay, uh, so we, uh, so, one way would be to contact Jim Majewski and uh, discuss with him and um, ideally get it, get the work and plant swapped by the guy, by the boy. Yeah, well, maybe, I, I, or even if you're going to do it just so that he is, I mean, it's a good learning experience for these Boy Scouts. So if there's something that went wrong with the project, I, I think he should be included. Um, I, I just think that's a nice way to do it. Okay, so that we'll let Jim Corden, um, Jim Majewski coordinate that. So we can just, what our next job could be if the EAC agrees is to uh, contact Jim Majewski, right? I think that you should contact Jim Majewski and see what if this is a true violation of the ordinance or not first. I think that would be the next step. Okay. I, I, organizing all the replanting and all that stuff is not the first step. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it's a true violation of the ordinance is the next step. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I would I would say that yeah. we'll take care of that, Monica. Fantastic. <laughs> was that it for the evening? Yeah, that was uh, the point I wanted to uh, uh, use your presence for. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Thank so you. Go ahead. We already got some insight into the townships part side of the story. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. I really enjoyed uh, working with you. I'm excited about the other volunteer project that we're working on with the uh, recycling, and I look forward to that. So um, thank you very much. And I will, if you need anything from me, I'm only a phone call or email away. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Um, Monica, so Ron has asked a question. Topic. So did everybody get a chance to look at the letter that was part of what I sent with all the other attachments is um, we need to vote on whether we want to submit this letter to the township to replace the two trees and to do maintenance specifically at what Jim's calling the compass park. Are we going to be doing the maintenance. I mean, <laughs> I think no, that's a good idea. I, I don't no, think I think, so. we're, I think we're requesting that the township actually do this, right? Well, I like this. We could probably sure. do it in an hour or two. I mean, as far as the maintenance, it's it's really just cutting, trimming back a couple of the, the tree. I mean, right. it's, it's actually minimal. Uh, Linda, um, when did you send this out? Because I don't think I got anything. I sent it with, um, it was attached with all, with everything else for this meeting. Um, You know, I'm on my oh, computer I right see. now. Uh, okay, if the subject line didn't say it, I may not have said it, seen it. Yeah, it was just an actual attachment with everything else. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, very good, Linda. The only thing I would add is I would put on July 2nd, 2020, uh, a site evaluation, just so they know that the date that we were out there, and it's good uh, for us to know from a historical uh, perspective as well. Kevin, did you get it? Kevin. Yes, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll resend it to whoever didn't get it at this point. Yeah, yeah I think it was there, so that it was not very uh, explicit in the subject line. So I didn't look for it. it I found it. Oh, you found it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I would have two minor suggestions, Linda. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the second paragraph, where you say a chestnut oak is missing from this area and should be replaced. Maybe put that in bold because that's a key thing right there. And then at the end of the third paragraph, where you say an American linden is missing in this area and should be replaced. So that gets um, the focus on those two trees. And they don't have to look for it. All right, 
that sounds good. So, Linda, if you incorporate those uh, changes, uh, why don't you, you know, do that when you're finished that, send it out to everybody. But I don't think we have to have, uh, you know, another meeting on this. Uh, if you send, I think we just have to vote on it, right? Pardon? We just have to. We just have to vote to send to, it out. To send it. Yeah, out. I think you know, with the modifications, I think we can uh, vote on that right now, can't we? Yes, sure. I think so. Okay. I make a motion to approve this letter to send to the Kurt Ferguson. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 I will send this out tomorrow. And I will copy everyone on it once I send it to Kurt. Okay. Perfect. Thank Aye. you. Um, all right, the next subject, community trail. I mean, we're all on the Zoom meeting. Um, we all know what's going on. The, the topic isn't so much the trail project itself. It's, um, I think Alan and Kevin had brought up some other things after the Zoom meeting in regards to lighting and dark sky certification. So I don't know if you guys want to um, discuss that further or what we need. What, yeah. What um well, uh, Jim Majewski did confirm that they don't light any of their trails, so it, it's not an issue. Light anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can take it off of this, but we can still have it as another item moving forward. Um, I did look into the dark sky certification. There are some good ideas in there, but I don't, I don't really think it's feasible for LMT to pursue it. Oh. Like maybe we can pursue certain parts of it, and I got to look at the, the. The lighting or ordinance that's already been done um, to see if there's any modifications that should be made. And it looks like you might want to check out our low impact development uh, ordinance, uh, Kevin, because when we wrote that years ago, we put in some uh, information about lighting, uh, about uh, okay. you know the direction it has to be and that sort of thing. And and a lot of this had to do with. Uh, you know, night sky certification, if you will. I mean, there's strict, I think, guidelines about the specific lights that have to be used in developments. Uh, so anyway, why don't you take a look at that and you might have some suggestions uh, to make it better. Okay, yeah, I mean, if it's something we're already doing and it's not that much extra to get the dark sky certification, then certainly, but I'll take a look. Okay. Yeah. Our main lighting source in the township was Bright Farms, and that appears to have shut down. So <laughs> yeah. that's good. I, does anybody know anything about that? Whether, because Bright Farms is supposed to take down all the structures and can revert back to farmland. I just, they're just sitting there right now, empty. We'll see. They still, you know what? They still have some uh, lettuce and stuff in some of the stores. I wonder how well, to open that. They have other greenhouses elsewhere. Oh, they do. Yo, know, around here. Uh yeah. I mean, I know there's. They have some up in New York City, and I think they have right. some down this way. Yeah. Huh. Topic: land use. Helen, you're up. All right. Um, I contacted Jim Majewski last week, and he said there are no new plans for any project submitted since our last meeting. So nothing new to look at. A few updates. Uh, the Aaron Dobry Road development will be before the supervisors on August 5th for a vote for the final approval. Um, the Planning Commission gave it its go ahead earlier this week. I think it's Monday, Monday or Tuesday. And I tell you, um, their stormwater management plan is probably the worst I've seen in the 12 years I've been reviewing them. But our township engineer says it's great. So in the planning commission listens to the township engineer. So it's, it's unfortunate, but I don't know what we can do. Uh, the Temco property goes before the zoning board again on July or yeah, July 21st to get their variances for the natural resource protection requirements 
because they're claiming it's a taking because so much of the land is restricted due to wetlands, woodlands, steep slopes. So hopefully that'll be voted down, but we'll see. And the last is the mixed use overlay ordinance. Um, I guess based on last night's Board of Supervisor meeting, they're gonna discuss that at, on their August 17th meeting. Or there, maybe it's a special meeting, I, I don't know, but I saw a date of August 17th. So um, if anybody has any comments, we submitted a comment letter on that way back in October, I think. So we've already commented on it. So um, I don't know if anybody wants to get on the line. I'm sure you'll have a long wait if you decide <laughs> to get on a comment on that. And nothing else. The M and M storage thing is not gone anywhere, fortunately. And um, Dogwood Drive is still dead, so that's good. So nothing else. Recycling? Do we do we know if the twenty six is still on for recycling, or is that still tentative? No, the uh, yes for the uh, styrofoam. You know, I mean, but are we allowed to do this, or do we need yeah. to do what we have to do with the tree planting and get uh, a plan put together? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Linda. We should do that. We should send a letter to Kurt, tell him how we would do it, and see if we can get approval. I'll draft up something, Jean, and um, yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'd like to not lose mm -hmm. that just to be able to get rid of, you know, I'm sure people, I mean, I still have styrofoam in my garage I'd like to get rid of. Right. Yeah, I have a whole well, we, well, um, didn't we um, sort of get Fred's approval, approval, <laughs> approval last meeting? Or I, did he say that he was going to bring it up? I, I think. We could watch the tape again. And see. Yeah, I, I you know, I'll I'll check, but um, I, I kind of felt like he said it was we could go move forward with that. Oh, I won't be able to attend that. So my daughter's supposed to be having her confirmation, maybe, because mm -hmm. this is now the second date that it's been changed to, and I'm not even sure if that's going to happen. So right. I well, we only need two or three people. We don't need a whole lot. Of yeah. People. Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, it really doesn't require a lot of people, uh, as long as we trying to figure out how many get rid of my styrofoam now. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> well. Well, you know what? I'll uh, How about if I volunteer my wife to pick it up? Oh, thank you. <laughs> from you. I can drop it off. How's that? <laughs> yeah. All right. If you can drop it off. Uh, I can drop it off the night before. I'm sure. Or sometime. And, and the reason week. I wanted to nominate Jean is because if I didn't, she was going to nominate me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, that's fine. Uh, you know, the night before, why don't you just bring it over and we'll take care of it. I'll text you guys. So. And you know what? Why don't I just go ahead and write that letter to be sure that we have approval? And Alan, I'll 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 draft it and send it to you. Okay. The letter to uh, it should go to Kurt. Kurt and copy the supervisors, I guess. Yeah, I think so too, and I think that's a good idea. I mean, I think Fred you know, did kind of agree to it, but we need something in writing, I think, something more formal. With everything going on, yeah, I think I think we need to make sure that we have the board and Kurt's approval on what we're doing on behalf of the Yeah, I, yep, I agree. Yeah, okay. mention where you wear masks, Jean, and gloves and things like that. Okay. And keep socially, they could throw it on the ground and we'd go pick it up or something. I mean, with something like that, it could just stay in the back of people's cars and yeah, just we could, yeah, one point of contact. Car. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah like just stay in your car, people. open open your trunk or something, and then whoever's yeah. there from the AC just take it out. And this yeah, way, yeah. no one has to yeah. have any con any contact with anybody. Yeah, that's usually how it works anyway. We, you know, we end up moving a lot of this stuff from people's cars. We just, we just, like whoever's there just may have to have gloves on just in case. Yeah, right. That's fine. Okay. I don't think this should be a big deal, but we'll see. Okay, yeah. so we have to do this pretty soon because if we do it, we've got to start advertising, you know, like a month ahead of time. Right. Well, yeah, and two, yeah. And my concern, though, is uh, not that we could come up with a safe process, but we've had three or four 
uh, letters going out and no one answers anything. So this, you know, this is an issue. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. of the other projects. I mean, we can have this letter, Gene will prepare the letter, everybody says it's great, we send it to Kurt, and then the card goes into a blank, uh, black hole. Yeah. Well, we'll have to follow up. Yeah, yeah I mean, if we don't, yeah. if we don't hear in like a, a week or two, or maybe say a week after the letter goes out, I think we got to follow it up, uh, you know, with with another letter, I guess, or a phone call. Yeah, and we, we should ask for a quick response so we can line up Mark Bortman and his bands. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. And right in the letter, just say, you know, we, we do need a quick response to this uh, because of, uh, you know, we have to do all these, you know, coordinated activities. Yeah, advertising and getting us all. Okay. All right. So then that brings us to the lecture series. Um, so I think last time we talked about maybe doing a webinar as opposed to actually doing, because I don't think they're going to let it, they're definitely not going to let us have. Well, I talked to, uh, you know, Gene about that and even Alan. And my feeling right now is I think we should cancel it because I don't think you're going to get good attendance for a webinar. And these kind of lectures the whole joy of them, it's kind of a, it, they're hands-on type lectures. You know, we have some donuts we give to the people. <laughs> There's some uh, socializing before and after. Uh, I think a, uh, a, a virtual or a webinar would be basically a very sterile experience. And my feeling is that we should just let it go till uh, next spring. What is everybody else? Is everybody in agreement with that or, or not? Uh, I think uh, that given the topic, it's a hot topic, um, it might be useful to the community. Otherwise, I agree with what Jim is saying in terms of the mode, but the topic is worth uh, addressing. Did we ever send out the flyers? No. About it? No. I don't, I don't think no, so. No, 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 not the flyers. I mean, the, the flyers for the... the um, the, gotcha. the lantern, the lantern fly. fly flyers, sorry. I don't think so. I don't know if Bar Barbara was taking care of that. And uh, it's my understanding leaving the EAC. What, what, no, wasn't it on the uh, the EAC newsletter? Didn't Paul, Paul send it out? A, a newsletter, yeah. Oh, okay. And... We didn't put anything in the community or in the township office. Oh yeah, there's actually brochures, I believe, in right. the uh, EAC uh, environmental brochure holder up. Right, in the nobody can get in there, building. but they're there. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, the building's locked. Has I mean, the only the only other thing would be to like give something to Monica to be able to put up on the website. Yeah. Get, take page. that, take well, that brochure she, and have her put it up on, on the actual LMT website. You mean just the, uh, the brochures? Just the brochures. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I think that's a good idea. But again, I don't think a, uh, you know, uh, a virtual video or anything like that is, is going to work with this. You need your cider do donuts. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> no donuts, no like. Just want to make because I'll be calling Colleen. Uh, she's the woman who's doing this, and uh, if everybody's in agreement, I'll just tell her that you know uh, next spring uh, we're planning on having this. Uh, is that okay with everybody? Sure. Um. So uh, we want to um, we want to give Monica what to put up on the website. The brochure that Barb worked on, the lanternfly brochure. Is it an actual brochure or just like a flyer? No, it was just a flyer. If I remember. Flyer. Okay. Okay. So we should ask somebody. Do you want me to do that? To ask Monica to put it up, either I could do it. You can do it. it doesn't matter. Um, I'll do it. I, I think oh, there's oh, wait, some in the main building. 
But I, 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 I can't lay my hands on one right now, though. I thought she sent... Uh, does anybody have it? I thought Barb sent it to us at one point. Wait, I might actually have it. I really think she sent it to Paul, too. Oh, I have. It's a two-page flyer, right? Right. Yeah, yeah okay. I have it. Okay. I have it as a Word document. I can convert it to a PDF and send it over to Monica. Okay. Good. All right, yeah, good, you, good. You, you're chair. All right. Do that. I'll do that. All right. All right. Um, I'll do that when we get off this call, just so that it's done. Um, okay. Um, all right. So then that brings us to the web page, newsletter, Facebook page, all of that. Um, so I guess we're, are we going to have a formal vote today to request, to send something to request EAC and EAC Facebook page? Yeah, I believe that is required so that the, um, uh, board can consider it for voting amongst themselves. It can't be just an individual request, just has to be a formally approved EAC request. Okay. So what is the procedure for that? Um, do we hmm. vote on it? I mean, yeah, I mean, vote to make the request. Yeah. Um, and who will okay. do this? Okay. Um, make... um, I think I, I, I have been asking for this because I think there is some uh, uh, level of uh, uh, direct communication required with the community and um, our communications are not the best. So I thought of this as some way of uh, using the current means where our community is very active on Facebook. So uh, it means one thing. It means uh, from, from the way I've seen being on EAC, how this operates is I think that all of us who uh, would like to should become the admins because if one person is not available, everything goes for a six, as we have seen with the newsletter. So um, we can designate one person to run the show, but in case that person is not available, is traveling, fall six, dies due to COVID or whatever it is, uh, you know, it's the passwords, et cetera, should not be just with one person. So that is the only point I would like to make. So we are all owners of the page. We can designate whoever will be active, but we should all own it. Okay. I have, I have a question or comment. Um, I just looked at the old minutes from February, and we already voted to approve bringing this up. Oh, oh, was it called a vote? Okay. It says uh, Paul moved, Sumia seconded to propose to the BOS to reestablish the LMT EAC. Oh, wonderful! Page. So, and which is this is which minutes? I will just send that to Fred then. Which uh, February month? February twelfth, twelfth, twenty twenty. Okay, I'll just forward that to Fred. Oh, sorry, guys. Somehow I got disconnected. Okay. But, no but then didn't something come out that said that we have to make it more official? It wasn't. This is what the official part is. And I think my mistake, I never realized that we had already done it. Oh, OK. So you um, you were the one that wanted to make it more official, but, but it is official enough? Yeah, Fred told me that there has to be, uh, or Monica told me that there has to be an official vote, but and apparently oh. we have already uh, had that. So that's okay. good. So we can uh, move that ahead. And uh, related to communication was that um, a little page I had done on uh, somebody in the community who's um, uh, doing something in her backyard, which the EAC uh, promotes. And I find that there are a number of such people in our community. So I thought it would be a good thing to highlight such uh, efforts. Uh, I called it uh, Every Bit Counts. I think everybody has had a, a sent, it, sent it out to all of you. So if you've had a chance to look at it, it would be great to have your uh, uh, comments. And uh, that is something I can send out uh, either through the LMT page or newsletter or the, or the Facebook page or all of them. All right, but do we need a formal vote on this Facebook page or not? Or has it already been, like Kevin said, already been approved uh, well, in February? Yeah, looks like it's already been approved and we have it in the minutes. So it's oh, okay, so then we don't need any vote on it, right? 
Right. Yeah. Okay. But what was what was approved? It was approved that we ask the board of supervisors for permission. It's approved, yeah, it's approved that we bring it that we bring it to the board, and okay. then now it's up to them. Yeah. Right. So then we just have so, to take the next step, right? Yeah. So I'll send this minutes, uh, February minutes, to Fred, and then he can take it up from there. I'm going to send this to Fred then with a note yeah. saying for uh, asking gotta be, yeah we need to write up a formal request right. now similar yeah. to what what jim and i did for the arborina planning so it's got to be like a formal letter oh right. okay fine yeah. all right and i assume sumia you will be doing that then yeah i can do that and i can send it across to all of you for your inputs okay sounds good and uh, so the other thing I had need, wanted inputs was on that uh, um, note on community initiatives. Any uh, response to that? Or is that kind of thing ready to be um, disseminated? Uh, you're, you're talking about uh, people who have, uh, for instance, native gardens or something that yeah. you want to highlight uh, that's mm -hmm. uh, environmentally friendly. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, well, I think, well, I think the first thing we have to do is get the, you're talking about putting this on Facebook, right? We have three, so far from what I know, we have three means, uh, right? I mean, potentially Facebook, but we already have the newsletter and we have the um, EAC page. I mean, EAC website. You know, with the uh, newsletter and the EAC page, uh, if you... Uh, you have some projects soon yet why don't you just write them up send them out to us so we can take a look and then if everybody and i'm sure they would be fine and then uh just put them on the newsletter or uh, the eac page facebook page does that make sense yeah so i wrote up one as the first uh, uh one so that's a story so uh i, I guess you would have to write it up uh, and then just send it out uh, for us to take a look at it. Uh, oh, Jim, I sent it out a lo long time back, and you also you already you're the only one who commented on it. I think you forgot. Yeah. But that was Connie Fairchild's. That, yes, yes. Right? Yeah, that that was wonderful. Yeah, I, I don't think great. it's a question of you know us, uh, uh, you know, uh, changing it or anything else. I think it's just that. When something like this goes out, uh, I think everybody should have a chance to take a look at it. I don't think, you know, on, on a write-up like that, I don't think, uh, I, know my, I know myself personally, uh, I'm not going to be one of changing it around. Uh, I just would like to know that it's going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time I uh, come up with a write-up, I will definitely share it. So I've already shared the first one. So are there any inputs to that? Uh, the first one I read and I thought uh, was very good, personally. Yeah, I, I don't know if every I don't know if any everybody else saw it or uh, you know received a copy or not, but I know I did. Yes, I sent it out to yeah. the whole group. Anybody else had a chance to look at it? I I read it. It was good. I didn't have any changes to it. Okay, all right. Yeah. I think it's a very, I think it's wonderful. There are, be there are many beautiful gardens in this township and it's nice to highlight. I think it's a good idea to highlight them. People are proud of their gardens. Yeah, and I think they feel, uh, I mean, uh, they're doing it for their own happiness, but they feel sort of uh, more part of a family or a community when we sort of recognize them. Right, absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Okay, so I will do these two things. Uh, write up a formal letter for the Facebook page uh, as a request and this existing write-up I can uh, send it to Paul for newsletter and I can also uh, send it to I don't know who for the EAC page who is the person Monica the EAC uh, page. E I've in the EAC page Linda uh, Linda <laughs> Linda isn't in the EAC page go to Barbara I have no idea. I, Sumi, I think that might be the case. Let me, I have to look at my notes. And, um, but I think Barbara is anything that goes on the 
website, I think okay. it goes through Barbara. I see. So let me check. Okay. I think, I think Jean's right. Uh, I think Barbara is the monitor of that. Uh, okay. So. And um, whenever the Facebook page, uh, if and when it gets approved, I'll put it on that as well. Okay. And also, I assume, you know, from our earlier discussion, that uh, you're going to come up with uh, maybe a letter to Jim Majewski uh, about those native plants. Uh, yeah. the, the, I should say the non-natives uh, and the uh, LMT community sign area. Yes. Uh, so I, I assume, you know, since this is your project, you would be doing that and then probably send it out to everybody to take a look at it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds, uh, that sounds good. What was that? What was that? That was the, uh, the non-native plants. Oh. Uh, uh, the community center. Sign. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the supervisor should be copied on that. Should be. Yeah, that's, assuming that that's right. It, the letter should go to Jim Majewski, but I would uh, copy Kurt the supervisor. and the supervisors. All of them. Yeah, I I got a text that from one of them and he requested it. <laughs> okay, I might need to get everybody's email from you. I'll do that. Okay. Those are such small plants. I can't believe uh, sourcing uh, five native grasses or shrubs is a problem. That's yeah. <laughs> not a while. It's just uh, oversight, I think. You know, that actually the whole thing upsets me a little. All Jim Majewski had to do is give us a call and let us know what was going on. And we could have offered some really, really good insights. And also, if getting plants were an issue, I, I could, I know I could find, you know, native grasses with basically no effort at all. So, you know, what he's saying, if he, in fact, that's what he did say about availability, that's falling on deaf ears as far as I'm concerned. These yeah, I yeah, know yeah. that is something that Monica just uh, assumed to give some reason. Um, what? Getting, this is being recorded. Oh, okay. What? So anything you say is in posterity. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. We can bring this up on a different time. So. Um, okay. Um, let's just move on to the Environmental Stewardship Award. I actually probably have a candidate for the award this year. But again, uh, what happened is we sent out a letter uh, requesting a revision to the award with some minor changes and we haven't heard back from anybody yet. So what I'm thinking is that maybe I should just send out another email uh, just as a reminder saying that, you know, we need, uh, we need uh, some answers to this so we can move forward. If everybody is in agreement with that, I will, uh, you know, send out another uh, a reminder. Sure. And uh, also, well, we'll get into that when we get into odds and ends. There's one other thing too. Quick end of year review. Um, Kevin, did you, can you send me something for what section? Like a little write up on sustainable PA ready for 100 program, anything? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I can get you something on that. Yeah, just, yeah. just send me something in a quick email and then I'll put it into, um, into the write up. I guess, so is Barb, is she getting off the EAC then? Or how am I going to deal with her sections? Well, I don't know. Alan, Alan was the one who told I her. talked to her. Yeah. She said she didn't renew or whatever they said. Her term was up in May or June and she didn't renew. So for her sections, what was she supposed to do? She was supposed to do the growing greener grant. The yearly species. I can, I can put something in for that one, but the growing greener grant, I don't. 
I mean, I know she was dealing with Mike Thompson, yeah. but I don't, I don't even. Um, didn't he come to our meeting in like in February? I thought we had talked to him recently. I, I've got some notes. Yeah. I'll write up something on that. All right. All right. I'll deal with the invasive species one. Um, and then I guess I'm, so, I don't know if Paul doesn't get my emails. Um, I need a write up from Paul. Does anybody see Paul ever? No, I, I don't know what happened to Paul. I mean, he generally was always at every meeting. And yeah. uh, well, there's a Democratic Zoom call tonight. Maybe he's occupied with that. Lo the local Democrats have a Zoom call tonight. I'll send something to him separately about that. Um, if not, I just might not even, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, okay. All right. So then that brings us to odds and ends. The first odds and end I have is the, uh, we also sent out an email about updating the tree bank costs and we haven't heard anything about that too. So I'm thinking that I should send out a reminder as well. And, you know, it'll be couched, uh, certainly very politely because, you know, I mean, what was that for? Uh, as will the other uh, one with, uh, you know, with respect to the Environmental Stewardship Award. What was uh, that last one? If yeah. everybody agrees with that, I'll just, you know, within the next week, I'll, I'll have them sent out. It's basically, it'll be the same letter as was sent out originally. Uh, you know, just, I'll just reference that. Say, you know, say one more time. <laughs> and we'd like to move forward with this. So uh, we would, you know, uh, appreciate a reply. Basically, that's it. If that's okay with everybody. Yeah, it'd be nice to get an answer. Okay. It is in the ordinance. <laughs> I'm supposed to do it. What's that about? <laughs> it's about the tree bank, uh, GD, uh, update the cost of yeah. the uh, trees. Oh, okay. Yeah, what the ordinance says is that every three years, yeah. you update it, uh, on a compounded basis based on the CPI. So instead of 315 now, my guess would be it would be probably somewhere around 330 or 340 or 50, whatever. Yeah, because the 315 was like in 2015 or 2014. I don't know. It's been a well, while. Whenever the, uh, whenever the ordinance went in, I forget when that exactly was, but. We can find that out easy. Yep. Anyway, the town's losing money. So yeah. and have that. All right. I have an odd and end, odds and ends. Um, Sumia. Yeah. The uh, the Raftery sisters that contacted you yeah. about cleaning up uh, yeah. the litter. It's been. We finally got that, um, got some information to them about that, Alan, um, and so they are going to start doing the, these are two women that, um, sisters that wanted to um, have a, they have a contest at work, an environmental contest, and they wanted to, um, it, you know, they put in like 20 hours on some environmental issue and they, they thought they would like to do uh, litter in the parks. And, and Alan and I had um, planned to meet with Monica to talk about recycling in the parks because she has indicated she wants to do a better job of recycling in the parks and um we thought we would do a like an inventory of the parks uh you know the number of recycling bins and how they're used and all how they're identified and all that kind of stuff so when these when the sisters wanted to do um wanted to do the pickup we thought maybe they could at the same time be doing the inventory and we zoomed with uh, Monica about it the other day, and she was all in favor of that. 
So um, I let Alan, I let um, Nicole know, and I think she, the two sisters are going to start on Saturday in the be up by the pool, behind the pool and the tennis courts and the pavilion and that whole area. Um, so they'll clean up and hopefully they'll they'll do some inventory. And I had uh, Alan told them I would meet them Saturday morning before they start. And she suggested she'll she'll we'll just talk on the phone about it. Well, um, sometime between now and Saturday morning. And um, so they're they're ready to go and wonderful. Hopefully that will, uh, you know, we'll get some good information. And Monica's looking to to get from the EAC um, suggestions on ways to improve recycling. Uh, so that's that. Great. So uh, let us know how it goes. Keep us posted. So since that has already been taken care of, I don't need to forward the same two ladies information about um, maintenance on the Memorial Park, which anyway, they're quite happy to do with the tech school. Uh, Probably not. They may pick up trash there. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, um, I wonder if that's, uh, well, we, you know what, what, I, um, at some point, I'm going to just do a write up and uh, and run it by Alan, and then we'll we'll give it to uh, Monica. And so, if it's not appropriate to do the memorial park because it sounds like they're busy doing some other stuff there, I don't know. Uh, it's a big park. Huh? It's a big park. They could still yeah. find some. Yeah, and Alan did Macclesfield already. Yep. I see. So anyway, that's that. You see, you did Macclesfield already. Means what exactly did you do? I counted the number of recycling containers, and their locations, and the trash containers. We want to get them together, and we're gonna probably find a sign, some sort of marking, because it's not real clear what's trash and what's recycling. And um, oh, okay. locations, better locations for them, all that. I see, I see, great. Yeah, sounds like a useful thing to do. Yep. I, I had another odds and end. Uh, for some reason, I'm getting these uh, emails from the community, and, and <laughs> I was wondering why am I getting these things all of a sudden? <laughs> And I looked up the township webpage, and it lists lists only mine and Paul's email ID, IDs for all of all the ESE members. Oh, so really? At, oh. at some point, uh, were we asked? No, at some point, were we asked whether we wanted our emails up there or not? Like, how did we get selected, and why are the other email other people? You know, why are <laughs> their you emails the not winner. there? I was never. I'm no one ever asked me. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, somebody could send them to Barbara Ellison. Yeah, so we should we should have all of ours up, right? I was wondering, like, how is it possible? And it hadn't hasn't happened in the last three years. And and then I went to the website, and for some reason, it's only Paul and me. I'm sure <laughs> my, my email might not would not have been there earlier because I haven't got these gotten these emails for all these years. So this is a sudden move by somebody. Well, you're just lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, not always, you know, sometimes you just have to quell unnecessary fires when people write to you with being alarmed by something or the other. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, we could email Barbara Ellison and give her our emails and ask each person could do that if they're so inclined. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll send her an email and give her my email to put up there. Great. Huh. Uh, Linda, you should do it as the chair. You can just say that, you know, please include. Five Has my email. Days. I'm surprised mine isn't up there. Yeah, yeah I, I, I thought maybe I missed some email asking whether I wanted it up or not. And maybe I never responded to it and mine went up. So I wanted to ask whether, you know, how come this is so exclusionary? <laughs> so. No idea. 
You know what, Sumi, if you, if you, if you just ignored them like most people do, yeah. requests, you wouldn't get them anymore. <laughs> No, I think uh, they were useful to know what uh, people think. This township, uh, uh, the community center, sign, the planting around that came up through that. Uh, there was another email about uh, somebody telling me to go weed the plants they had planted outside the township building some time back. So <laughs> luckily, Jim filled me on that so I could respond appropriately. Oh, were you talking about the garden outside the... Uh admin building yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay I, I actually went by there today and i think i talked to alan about that too yeah the uh, garden up uh to the left of the building as you face the building is immaculate so somebody took care of that there's new mulch in there it's beautifully maintained when you go back near the tax office that garden quite frankly is not in bad shape there's very little weeding that has to be done because the native plants are so thick that they basically kept the weeds out. What has to be done there is the plants have to be thinned. And there's one or two trees. I don't know what they, what they really are, if they're native or they just grew there by chance. Uh, aesthetically, they should probably be removed because uh, they're destroying the scale of the garden. Uh, there's just a, a small little area where some mulch could be put in there. Uh, but uh, I guess I, I guess we have to address that, that letter from, I guess it was from Laura, where she asked for more money to maintain the garden. It was just an email. It wasn't a letter. Oh, really? Uh, an email? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I didn't get that one. Maintaining it. I, I guess it's not Laura or her group. Uh, but the, the, the garden to the left of the building is, is beautiful. Uh, and the other one doesn't really look that bad at all. Is something it, we're supposed to be maintaining? Uh, pardon? No. Is something we're supposed that's what I mean. So why are we addressing it? Well, I because know. initially we gave them some money, uh, years ago. I understand that, but that, that, does that mean that we're responsible for maintaining it? No, Who, no. Who's responsible yes. for maintaining it? They well, see, that's the problem. Uh, <laughs> you go back, I guess it was that 2018, uh, Alan actually researched this. And Laura came to us and uh, said that she had a group uh, that was willing to maintain, but they wanted some money for plants. And we gave them some money. With a caveat, though, what I basically told them is that, <clears throat> look, <clears throat> If you can't maintain it, don't do it. The maintenance is real, real important on these projects. Uh, and she said, yeah, don't worry about it. The maintenance will be done. And then the maintenance was not done. Now, Laura had some issues, you know, with the health of her husband that were pretty serious. But uh, I think she was, there was supposed to be an organization behind her, maybe the master gardeners. But all I know is that the maintenance stopped in that garden and then the township, I guess, was a little upset about it. So I guess they're starting to maintain it a little, but they're not going to do the kind of work on that garden that, like, say, master gardeners or a garden club, somebody who kind of, uh, you know, adopted that would do. So at this stage, I, I don't know really what we should do, but I, Laura, I think, was asking for money. In my personal opinion now, uh, and I don't know if the rest of the uh, council agrees, I wouldn't give them any money until they, they can demonstrate that they have a viable organization that's going to take care of this in the long term. Then I think if they show us that, I personally would think, yeah, sure, give them several hundred dollars. Uh, that's not an issue. Uh, any comments from anybody? Yes, I think I completely agree with you because the email that I got from Laura was, can you please go out there and uh, weed that patch? So I was <laughs> taken aback. Uh, you know, you don't know me that well. You, she found my name on the ESC thing. And uh, so the conversation revealed that she thought that she should pass the baton to the younger members of the ESC. 
so again then it brings brought me to linda's way of thinking okay i'm part of the eac am i supposed to be that is that my job is that my responsibility so luckily i had spoken to jim and he filled me in and i agree with what he's saying no i don't i mean if if they come up with a plan a written plan on how they're going to maintain this then there is fine. no day it is only her and she has i think asked some friends earlier because i told her why don't you ask some of your uh, like minded friends to uh, help you with it so and then she sort of uh, uh, came back with uh, you know everybody is old and this thing so there is no group it's just her and whomever she manages to uh, get from uh, time to time to help her well linda you're right they come up with a plan uh, a written plan uh, that states that there's a viable organization that's going to take care of this now and in the future <coughs> excuse me <coughs> uh i would be in favor of in favor of giving them uh you know some money in the future but not not now because their track record is just not good yeah we need some assurance it's township's responsibility it's not our responsibility it's the right. responsibility of the people who put it in so yep i agree so how do I, Sumia, do you, are you the one who she sent the email to? No, I didn't get this money. I didn't get this email about asking for money. I got I the email about go and read that stuff, you know? Yeah, she sent it to me, I think, first. Mm. So, do you, so what, do we, what do we do? Do we answer this or just wait all? <laughs> goes away. I guess I could try to answer it. I'll just <laughs> say, <scout. laughs> <laughs> Scout, um, I could just say what you said, Jim, you know, your language that if you come up with a viable plan that will maintain the garden now and in the future, then we would consider additional money if needed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's more than fair. What does everybody else think? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I feel a written plan is nothing, uh, not necessarily has anything to do with the consequences. Right. I think we need to ask for more. Uh, I think we have enough, like you're saying, proof of uh, credibility. And she has already said she is older. Her friends are older. Uh, they can't do it. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, mm. Right. Yep. Uh, We're going to meet with Kevin Hucklebridge. So maybe Public Works is going to take it over. Who knows? Well, yeah, but they, you know, they'll chop and burn. Okay. They will not maintain the gardens the way gardens should be maintained because they don't have the personnel to do that. And they also probably don't have the expertise to do it. Uh, to maintain a perennial garden like that, uh, you got to have people who know what they're doing. Uh, the, initially, I thought uh, Laura said that she was going to get the master gardeners, the Penn State master gardeners, a bunch of them together and form like a committee. But uh, I guess that that never happened. So, but I think uh, Alan had a good plan that uh, mm. the wording that he suggested, I think, is is certainly polite, but uh, but but firm. Your wording, Jim. Uh, I'm not sure that. <laughs> That's why he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kevin, did you want to talk about your resolution, renewable energy? First, let me unmute myself. Um, yeah, I sent I sent a, a draft copy of the resolution um, for Ready for 100. Basically, I took the same language that Doylestown used and I tweaked it. Um, I've never done a resolution before, so I definitely would appreciate um, any feedback on that um, so I can make any edits before it goes to Fred and, and possibly the board. So basically, uh, just, just to, to recap, the, the, the main goal of it is to go uh, by 2035 to get 100% of your um, electricity from renewable sources uh, for, for main power and then for heating and transportation to do that, to get to 100% by 2050. So that's the goal of the Sierra Club and this Ready for 100 initiative. Um, the uh, transition team for Bucks um, decided to um, kind of follow that guideline, but they're a little bit more ambitious in their recommendations. 
um, five years sooner. Um, so I think what we're proposing is reasonable um, in terms of what Bucks is hoping to do and what other local townships um, are already uh, committing to do. So does the Sierra Club provide any training for townships to figure out how they can get there? Yes, um, they, they, they do. They offer a lot of training. Uh, some is free, some is, is paid um, in terms of working with uh, other municipalities and finding um, uh, companies to use to do the energy auditing studies, uh, finding ways to get there, uh, doing power purchase agreements, uh, investing in solar and other things. So there's a lot of resources out there, but this resolution is kind of the first step uh, on, on the way to get there. I would suggest one more whereas, and your email made me think of it. You mentioned local precedent and local momentum. I think yes. Add That's a whereas, good. you know, whereas other Bucks County municipalities have adopted similar resolutions such as Doylestown Township, and hopefully by the time this goes to them, Solberry and uh, Buckingham, you mentioned. Yes, and you yeah. might even mention yeah. the Bucks County Transition Committee recommendations because that's important because supervisors always like to know that somebody else has already done this and they're not exactly. way out there by themselves and it, it'll help. Okay, yeah, I can definitely add that in. Didn't Joe Biden say his energy policy would be all renewables by 2050? I thought he said I, that. I didn't actually this read this that yet. I, I, I saw the links to it, but I didn't read that yet. Yeah, I think this is similar to his platform on energy. So my concern is only like, unless you uh, can uh, map out, uh, plan out, give the township a roadmap, which is feasible, uh, you know, our township is good at taking resolutions and not doing anything more about it. Yeah. We have yeah, a good track I, record of that. I, so, I know that um, yeah. I know that one either Buckingham or the, or the other one is submitting a white paper along with the um, the resolution. So there there is some other documentation I can pull together. Uh, that, or just a do. simple uh, you know uh, a, a simple roadmap, which includes um, looking at resources. You don't have to actually look at the resources, but you can look say that this these this is kind of required, so that okay. they get an idea as to what does it take. Okay. And whether they are willing to uh, put staff and money behind it. Okay. Yeah, and Kevin, I sent you an email a few minutes ago about East Rock Hill Township and what they're doing with this. And they're going to buy their or build their own solar field. Um, they're going to pay for part of it and they're going to get investors to pay for part of it. But you could look at that too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that. That was, that was okay. definitely something that was interesting to me. What's she barking at? I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> There's a house across the street. They went away for the weekend, and one of their toilets leaked, and it just leaked all over the place and they're going to have to be gone for the next six months while they fix the house. It's like a hundred thousand dollars worth of damage. Oh my gosh. So there's some workers over there and I think she's barking at them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Wow. That's a shame. I, know, I never heard of anything like that. I got to find more details out. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I think, is that, is that it? Do we have any open discussion topics? Um, I guess the, um, the only other thing that was kind of I wanted to talk about just as I don't know if anything's being planned in the future in terms of uh, township vehicles. Um, but if they are looking into or if they're open to electric vehicles, um, that might be a way to uh, save money for the township long term. Um, I, I sent Linda a link to an, a police department that had recoup their payback in about a year and a half um, by switching to electric vehicles. Um, I don't know where we are in terms of what Parks and Rec needs and what the police needs and what their long-term plans are, but just want to throw it out there. All right. 
I mean, would Fred Weiss know anything about that? Maybe we could ask him next meeting. Yeah, uh, I can bring Chief it up. Kaluzzi. That was it for me. All right, I think I will uh, leave if there's nothing else left. Are we yeah. vote? You can't leave until we vote. You can leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, send over the letter. I move to adjourn. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, thank you, everyone. All right, thank, thank you, and enjoy the evening, everybody. Hey, Alan, stay on so I can see Scout. <laughs>